This is what we're about to make here. A nice pot brisé, broken dough. Hi, welcome to my video. I'm Roger Powell. I'm about to demonstrate to you how to make a pat brisé. Pat brisé means literally in English, broken dough. Why? Because it's very flaky. Uh, for that dough, I'm gonna use some cake flour here, uh, 300 grams of cake flour. I'm gonna need some cold butter. Make sure your butter is very cold. I have 125 grams of cold butter, a quarter teaspoon of salt and a quarter teaspoon of sugar and one whole egg. First thing first, I'm going to put my flour onto the station here. If you want to do that in a bowl, you can. I prefer working on a, on a station like that. So I'm going to put that flour up just like that. I'm going to add to it my butter. I'm going to work the butter into that flour. That's called in French terminology um, sablé. We're going to sablé the butter with a flour. Sablé, it's sand. You know the sand you work on on the beach? That's the consistency we want here, dry sand, okay? We don't want a big lump of butter, so we need to break it into that flour. To do that, you could use your hand or you could use a pastry scraper like that, and you're just going to cut the butter into the flour. And we want it to kind of completely homogenized with the flour. If you use your hand, make sure you don't touch the butter too much or too long, I would say, because the heat of your hand will make it melt and you don't want that butter to melt. You just want it to mix well with the flour. So I'm cutting it like that. If you want to use a mixer for that, you could, no problem. You would like to use the paddle, not the whisk or the hook. The paddle will do a great job with that. For that for you. At one point I will use my hand now, huh? but not right now. Again, this is what we call sablé, sablé sandy texture we want to get. I'm going to make some nice fruit tart after with that dough. I don't know if you check out my other dough, there's another dough I have on my channel that I'll make in a minute, it's a great recipe too, much quicker. And remember when working with pastry, when doing pastry recipe, you need to be very precise on the ingredient amount. If it recipe called for 300 gram of flour and you put 305 gram, that might change the end result. So be careful, be very precise. Using a digital scale also is preferable for pastry preparation. Okay, that starts to look good here. I'm going to add, use my hand in a second just to finish that sable. my hand I'm just gonna make sure everything mixed well and I'm just gonna go like that nicely trying not to make a mess all over actually I said one egg it's two eggs but I'm gonna add in that recipe two eggs I miss an egg here I'm gonna get it see I'm taking it in the hand kind of roll it like that, so it mix nicely. You do not want to press the butter into the flour, huh? you need to be gentle, because if you press it, it will, might melt into the flour, which you don't want. 
if you don't want to use egg, if you want to make it vegan, for example, you could just use water. You will use 125 milliliter of water for that dough. Look at that beautiful consistency here. This is great. It's like I'm working on the sun on a beach right now. Woo. Okay, so that's ready. I'm going to add my salt and sugar, but I should have added before, I forgot. I can put it in now, it's okay. One thing to remember when you work with dough like that is you have flour, but at one point it's gonna be in contact with moisture, your egg or water, and that will create gluten. Gluten is a protein that comes from flour, and if you work your dough too much and you develop too much of a gluten, that dough is going to be elastic and you don't want that. So it needs to be a quick process after you add your wet ingredient to it. Yeah. If you're making bread, for example, you want to develop gluten. So we work this dough a long time when we make bread because we want it to be elastic. Or pasta dough, for example. But that's not the case for that kind of dough. So after you add the wet ingredient, remember, you need to be very quick and try not to work that dough too much, not to overwork it. Okay, that's gonna be good here. I have a beautiful dough, beautiful mix. I'm going to put everything back together and add my egg into it. I'm gonna create a little well. I like to do it like that. And inside here, I'm going to add my two eggs. Okay, so I'm going to take my egg. I'm going to use my eggshell splitter to break those. It's my little gadget. I like to use it. It just breaks the egg up directly like that. Move the shell. Take the other one. Hop. And voila. I like that gadget. Hope maybe one day you find it in a store. I created it. I think it's cool. So after I add my egg into it, I'm gonna mix everything together. I'm gonna to go like that. I'm gonna put my hands this way. I'm gonna mix it with everything. Remember, that process needs to be quick, okay? I'm gonna use myself with my pastry scraper here, scrapping everything off my hand. I'm gonna go like that. And in a second, I'm going to do what we call fraiser, fraiser, fraisage. I don't think there's any word like that in English. It's just to homogenize everything together here. So what is paysage here? I show you. You put the dough in front of you like that. You could use the palm of your hand and we go like that. Hop. You see? That's fraisage, where you kind of press all the ingredients together like that. Okay. I do that twice and then the dough is done. Again, I'm going to put it together in front of me. I'm going to repeat the process, but this time I'm going to do it with my pastry scraper like that. So I go like that. And I have that, I put it aside. Here we go again. Now I remove everything from the pastry scraper, the dough scraper, and now I'm just gonna create a nice bowl with that. This is done. My dough is ready. Make sure I don't leave anything behind. It's very important. No waste at all. Just 
is going to kind of shape it well like that so here it is a nice pot breezing I'm gonna let that rest for an hour then it be ready to be used why do I let it rest because if I use it now it's a little too soft it needs to be a little firmer and also I want the gluten to relax as the re gluten relax it'll be easier for me to roll it and my dough won't shrink on me thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed that quick demo on how to make a pad brise thank you for watching